Yes, Antonio Gonzalez, the Secretary General of the United Nations, speaking. And a few years ago, this would probably have all happened at the UNGA in September. It also reflects how there's been a shift in terms of which multilateral body can get things done away from the UNG. Now, this question will also be asked about the relevance of the G20, given the fact that China and Russia are playing in a, in a very move, a very strong move away from the United Nations. I'll give a longish answer. Okay. First, as you know, and fast and as crisp as possible. Okay, okay. I'll run. Uh, first, as you know, right from the time of Mahabharat to our films today, there's always been a villain in the story. Uh -huh. China has decided to act as a villain, as the US National Security Advisor said, and is doing it right up to the last moment. So I hope that they have a change of mind and change of heart along with Russia, and declaration is possible. Because if the declaration do you think comes. Do be com willing to soften their stance? Or do you think they'll be obstructionist like well, they've been so far? Well, my uh, heart tells me I hope, but my mind tells me they will not. But it has happened in diplomatic parlays that at the last moment there is some give. But knowing China, uh, I, I don't think that's possible. They've come uh, from so far in all the ministerial meetings that have happened, they've played the role of party pooper. They've been acting as the obstructionist. Catherine D. Hada joins us, visiting fellow chair in the US India Policy Studies at CIS, CSIS. Uh, thank you very much, Catherine, for joining us. Sitting where you are, what are you picking up and making of uh, India's G20 in the way that it's got started so far? Well, um, first of all, thank you very much, Namaskar, to you and your viewers. Namaste it's a pleasure to, to be well, here today. Welcome. Um, I think it's it's going. Uh, you know, it seems like it's off to a great start. Uh, the G20, um, you know, is an interesting organization. I was listening to the question of whether it could replace the UN. Um, I don't think it can. Um, I don't know that any, uh, many people would say that it would. Uh, it's not enforceable, for example, um, and its membership is very significant, you know, because it's 20 leading world economies, um, but it's, it's uh, you know, it is limited. <laughs> so. No, it's not about whether the G20 I... can replace the UN. Nothing can replace the United Nations. It's about how yeah. the United Nations is becoming less significant and less important than in the past. For example, take the P5, the five permanent members yeah. of, the Uni of the United Nations who are supposed to shape the global world order. A, the power of uh, global politics has shifted a lot from that old construct of the P5, India's absence, for example. Uh, and that of several other deserving countries shows that the P5 isn't relevant. That's the point that I was making, that the P5 and the UN per se isn't quite as important as it used to be. Oh, well, uh, that could be a subject of a whole other <laughs> show, I suppose. And you know, we have long favored, you know, adding India to the Security Council, uh, for the record, we being the United States. But just get back to the G20 and its significance, what it does do. You know, it was set up very specifically uh, sort of as an adjunct um, after the first round of Asian financial crises, you know, to be kind of a marginal meeting uh, with the G7. Uh, and then after the second round of financial crises, you know, in the late, uh, well, in 2008, you know, it became a, a permanent fixture. Um, and it's very important, you know, because it is a chance for 20 of the leading economies to get together. Uh, they're very different in terms of uh, size diversity of their economies um, and so you know it's so it's it has that role and again you know during the time of COVID I think it was an effective vehicle during a time of world okay. crisis. So I just um, want to tell our viewers that the next guest who will be landing moments from now is the Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. His plane was to land at 6 15 p.m. as I also said some of these landings are slightly behind schedule. You can't blame the Indian ATC for that. It's also a massive complex exercise, Ambassador. There are so many planes coming in one after another, all their security protocols, uh, and uh, some like uh, the Saudi prince flying a little behind schedule as well. So therefore, it's a very, very complex exercise to just manage the skies at this moment. Plus, uh, someone like Biden, he would not be coming only in his aircraft, but there will be at least four to five aircrafts which will be carrying equipment so that his cars are uh, offloaded well in time. Uh, all, all the uh, 
other supporting equipment in terms of technical assistance, communication equipment. So, there would be many delegations including Saudis would be coming just to show that he is, he is the boss of that region. Uh, there will be a couple of aircrafts accompanying him also. So, it is a very complex ex exercise. 